name is Sarah Shell. I'm the owner here at Friends Studio Flowers. Thank you so much for joining in with us um, on our very first virtual workshop. We do have this video for you, um, but also wanted to tell you that from 6 to 7 tonight, Ashley and Hannah are going to be live on Instagram so that you can send in your questions as you go um, to make these beautiful fall arrangements. So happy flowering. We are excited. Welcome to our very first virtual flower workshop. Um, bear with me. I've never done one of these before and I'm also coming to you with pretty tired eyes because I have a two-month-old baby at home. So if I can't find real words as I'm going along, please just offer a little bit of forgiveness. All of you should have picked up your flowers today from the flower bar and Ashley and Hannah put together a bucket for each of you that looks something like this. Um, they bundled everything so it's all um, easy to get home and none of the little ranunculas or anything gets squished down in the bucket. So let's talk through a little bit of your supplies. Um, also included for the flower workshop is this um, really cool container that we had for all of you that makes a really nice shape. Um, for a coffee table or a long dining room table and we can talk through as we go through the workshop kind of how you want to style your flowers based on where you're going to put it. Um, and then Ashley and Hannah also already went and taped off the chicken wire like this. This is a really nice way um, to create a framework um, for your containers. So if you want to do this at home after this workshop, um, you can save this little piece of chicken wire or you can just go get a roll at Lowe's, um, chicken wires just like this, and then just use some wire cutters to cut around um, to get a little square shape. And then you can just form it into a ball and just sort of tuck the edges in like this. So then you have a full oval where you have a place for the stems to go here and connect through underneath down below. Um, and then you can also get some of this clear floral tape just at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that. And you just do, you put the chicken wire in and you want it to come up out of your container a little bit. Um, and then you just tape across with the clear tape. And then here's a nice tip so when it gets wet, it doesn't come off. You just wanna tape um, the border around the tape and then tape the tape back to itself to make it extra secure so you're not halfway through your flower arrangement and everything starts popping out. That is pretty frustrating. Um, okay, and then I think a lot of you also ordered some clippers from us. If you didn't order some from us, um, grab a pair that you already have at home or even just a plain old pair of scissors works just fine. Um, a note on your new special clippers, do not use these to cut your wire because it will make them really dull. So make sure that you know, your kids know that too, that you want to keep these safe and only use them for flower clippings. Um, but it's also great, you can go clip stuff out of your yard or the side of the road um, if you want to find some other things to add to your flower arrangements that you're going to do after this as well. All right, let's get started. So take some water and fill up your container. And I would just fill it maybe an inch from the top, um, at least to start. So then when you move it, you don't slosh water everywhere. But pay attention, these flowers, once we put as many in there, they really drink a lot of water. So you're going to want to check the water level every day just to make sure that they have enough water because um, that's really sad if you realize your flowers are dead because you didn't water them. Um, okay, so we've got the water all in there. And then so to get started, what I would recommend doing is you can take the bundle of greenery out and undo it. It's so cute. They made them into little bouquets too already. So you can pull that out. And now there's just a little bit of bouquet tape there. And you can just undo it and lay out all of your pieces of greenery so you can get an idea of what you have. Um, and so what I generally like to do first, before you use any of the flowers, is to green out your container. And that's kind of what we mean when we say just put a lot of greenery in it to get the basic shape of what you're going for. So I'm gonna plan my arrangement for um, a longer table. So if I'm doing this in the middle of my dining room table that's a rectangle, I would want it to face this way and I would want it to trail out a little bit on the sides, the shorter sides, and then be a little bit more contained on the inside so it would be a little more narrow on these sides. So then you can set plates around it and it won't really be um, on top of your dinner. So, because otherwise, if you did it all evenly around, it could get a little bit too big. So here's what we'll do with the beginning of our shape. Um, sometimes it's easier to use, this is viburnum, and it's sometimes easier to use kind of a bushier 
um, branch or foliage at first to be able to stick it in your container to get some shape. Um, and here's a really nice tip. When you have like a long piece like this, you can also cut it right above one of the leaf joints right there. And then you can have two stems worth of it like that. And then you can put it, use it in your container. Another really big tip to keeping your arrangement looking good for a long time is to make sure that you don't have any leaves down in the water because that contributes to bacteria growth and it keeps your flowers from lasting as long. All right, so first, I'm gonna actually design towards me because it's kind of hard to do it backwards. And then I'll spin it around on my Lazy Susan for you guys to see. So I'll put this little bit of viburnum and the way that you wanna do it is to make sure that you get the stems in there where they kind of lock into the chicken wire. Um, but don't worry, I will say like the first couple stems that you're putting into the container, it feels a little bit awkward and it's going to look a little awkward for a minute. So don't worry too much about how it's looking at the beginning. And I'm going to do the same thing with this other piece. And I like to work in clusters and putting things like I don't like it to look polka dotted of the same type of flowers or foliage all the way around. So I'm going to put a little bit of viburnum in this corner and a little bit over in the other corner. See? All right, so the next thing that I'm going to use is this pretty Laura Pedlum. And this is really nice. Um, also, this probably grows in a lot of y'all's yards. So if ever you need extra for your arrangement or you want to get some um, for another arrangement that you're making on the road, I bet a lot of you have this in your yard. But I like the shape of it because it has a nice arc to it here. And that's a really nice thing to pay attention to also is the way that the flowers or the leaves grow on the stick. So if you put it here, I like to maybe make it lean out a little bit like that. Because then the way that we kind of get that, I guess, garden look to your arrangement is paying attention to the way that the plant grows naturally. And so we're arranging it just like Mother Nature grows it, so to speak. All right, so I'm doing the same sort of thing with this Laura Pedlum. I'm picking, you know, I'm using both parts of this branch or two parts of the branch. And then I just pull off, so see, now I have two pieces that lend itself to making a nice full shape. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I might put this one, I like the little burgundy color up here too. All right. Then this is Eliagnus, and it's another thing that grows like crazy around here. So you probably have some of it in your yard or around. Some of you probably don't like it in your yard because it's super invasive. But yeah, do the same thing. Take the leaves off like this. I'm gonna tuck a little bit down here. Give some movement. Um, then this pretty foliage, this does not grow around here, but it's called Copper Beach, but it has a really pretty fall color to it. have to go bit by bit. Like I, you notice I'm using every bit of the amount that I was given. You don't have to do it that way. This is just, you know, a way to kind of work elements into your floral arrangement is by kind of going down one to the other. And I, like I was saying, I like things to be a little bit more asymmetrical um, where they're not all polka dotted. Like for me, I like for the copper beach maybe to only be on one side and then I'll balance that with one of the other types of flowers that I have um, to kind of connect with the color. But I just think it adds a little bit more interest to your garden style arrangement um, so that it doesn't all feel, you know, as traditional or like everything is the same. It, um, but if you like it that way, there's no wrong way to do a flower arrangement. So if you want to make it a little bit more symmetrical, please go ahead. Um, this is straw flower, so now I'm kind of decided I'm going to move into a few um, flowers. And you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself because what I wanted to tell you, um, after the greenery, what you want to do is actually go back to your bucket. There you go. 
And you want to find some of the bigger focal point flowers that we have in here. And so one of the ones that we gave you that's really beautiful are these garden roses. And some of you might have um, some of these red ones here. Um, I have some pink ones in my bundle, so we're going to make those work here. Um, and I think it's so pretty, like, and it's kind of unexpected, like the pink with some of these deep fall tones. It just brightens it a little bit. I think it's so pretty. All right, so do the same thing. Open up your flower bundle and just lay everything out. So see, let's see. Oh, I have the wax flower so I'm going to come back to that. But watch out for these little guys, these like beautiful little burgundy ranunculus. They can get squished and they have really delicate stems. So you can just lay them all out like this. Um, and I'm just going to leave them on my table for now because I'm working relatively quickly. But um, if you find that you're doing this over, you know, a little bit longer time, you could put them back in your bucket um, just gently so they're not out of water for too long. Whatever. Um, what I should have said at the beginning, you guys, is we like to highlight lots of local farmers and any kind of flowers that we can get locally, those are our favorite. Um, because, like, for example, these are some beautiful zinnias from Donna at Floral and Hardy Farm. And they, it's just with flowers that are grown locally, they're not engineered to be so stick straight. So they're really, like, the colors and the vibrancy, and I mean, look at this one has, like, a little curve at the top. Um, that just makes for a more whimsical flower arrangement, which is the style that we really like here. Um, and then, of course, we just like supporting our local farmers because they work so hard and they grow such beautiful products. Okay, so let's start, though, with these garden roses that are not local. So you do, they, you see how stick straight they are? We have to kind of lean them into the arrangement so they don't just look like this. Because, so what you want to do is with a garden rose, it's so pretty to see down into the flower. Um, and so I'm going to use the pair of these in the front of my arrangement. And it's better too if you do like your bigger flowers first because then you can work all the little flowers and add foliage all around it. Okay. So let's see. That one there. And then I think, so this is where I situated the first flower down here and it's just leaning right on the edge. Um, and if you, the other thing too, as you're cutting, you always err on cutting it a little long because then you can go, always go back and cut the stem shorter. Um, and if you do end up cutting it too short, just set it aside because you can probably work it back in later in the arrangement. Um, and then what I'm going to do, because I generally like there to be a little bit of airiness in between like the two focal point flowers, um, I'm going to use some of this wax flower and put that up above. See, that one's a little long, so I'm going to cut it again. And see, look how that leaf just fell. Don't worry too much if they don't stay exactly where you want. You can always manipulate them or move things around later or take things out or give it a haircut. So don't stress too much if your arrangement doesn't stay exactly where you want it all the time. All right, so... And once you get a few stems in there, it's easy to kind of have more of a framework for where your flowers go. That's why we like the chicken wire and then also why it's a little awkward at the beginning until you get some stems in there. So this is how I like to do focal points a lot of times is you do, if you have a pair, rather than have them on the same visual plane where they're right next to each other, I will tuck one back behind like this and then bring another one up in front a little bit so it feels a little bit airier. Um, someone, I went to a workshop a while ago and they said you want it to feel as though a bird can fly through your arrangement if you're going to have it as a more of an airy shape. Um, not always birds can fit, but maybe a butterfly. Um, but it's just something that you can allow for some space. Um, and the other thing that that does too is it helps give your arrangement a little bit more volume too because they'll come out off of the um, base of your container as well. Because if you cut them all to the container depth, you'd end up with a much smaller arrangement. And this also allows some of your prettiest blooms to really shine and you can really appreciate how beautiful each one of them is. Um, okay, so next thing, I am gonna set, these are all smaller blooms. So they're kind of like the ones that we dust on the top of everything. I'm going to open up 
this bouquet because we have, so we have mums and spray roses. Gosh, these spray roses are beautiful. They're wide open. And then we have some stock and a bigger mum. Yep, that's what we've got in here. So I would do the same thing. Open them all up like this. And you can just lay them out on your table. So we have this pretty, oops, still stuck on the bouquet tape. There we go. We have this pretty peach stock. Look how gorgeous that is with the fall colors. Gosh, I love it. And then we have spray roses in a couple different colors for you. Some cute little yellow mums. And these, these are garden sprays, yes, Ashley? Yeah. Okay, and so I will say spray roses can be overwhelming. Like, look how large that is. So sometimes if you just, I mean, if I just were to cut that and stick it in my arrangement, it takes up like half the sides. So what you want to do is basically the same trick that we did with the foliage to kind of get a little bit more out of it and also make it easier to work with. So I find like a little joint, see where the, they connect, where there's like a Y shape where the stems meet. And if you cut, use your um, snips and just cut right there along the edge. If you cut along like where the um, stem, like along the angle of the stem, it really is hard to tell that I ever even snipped that off. Okay, so now I have this little cluster of blooms that I'm just gonna stick up here. And I actually think three, once they go in the chicken wire, it's gonna smush them up together like that. And for me, I don't like that shape as much because see how they're all on the same visual plane? So I'm going to actually try to see which two I prefer to keep together, and I'm going to do the same thing. And so I'm going to start with a pair like this. Um, and don't, you know, if you like it like that, feel free to do it that way. Um, but if you do snip it apart like I did, you can just set aside those other ones. Even the one with the little short stem, we'll find a place for him later. Um, and then you can just tuck it into your And so the other thing, like I actually might use this little short one right now because it'll help me create a different plane um, for my flowers. Um, and another trick too, visually, um, if you, maybe you guys have heard of like the rule of threes with visuals, like sometimes that helps just create a nice composition. So here I tucked, here's the ones that are connected, these two, and then the little shorty I just tucked underneath like that. And so then it has like a nice airy quality to it um, and connects with the colors over here, but is a little bit, um, adds more interest as you travel around the arrangement. So it's not all the same. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is use some of this stock. And this stock has a nice um, arc to it, like some of the green areas. So I'm gonna use that on the ends to help me create the shape that I want on my long rectangular dining table. Like that. See? So now it's giving me a shape over like this. Um, and you might like it to do, you know, some stock on either end. I personally am gonna put both of my stock together on this end and I'm gonna do something different down at the other end just to create a little bit of interest. Oh, and by the way, if you want a Lazy Susan, if you are wanting to do arrangements more often, um, this one just came from Ikea. I'm pretty sure you can get one at Target. Um, but it's really helpful, too, to kind of move it around um, to be able to see like what your arrangement is doing, and it just makes it easy to arrange. So with the stock right now, I put them in, and I actually don't really like how they're both the same length. Do you guys see how that is? So I'm gonna come back around and cut one a little bit shorter. And same with the stock. If you find that the stem is a little bit shorter than you need it to be to get to um, down into the water, you can just pull off a few of the blooms down below to make it a little bit less dense. All right. So see? So now I've shortened that one, and now they're not both sticking out like this, but they're a little bit more on the same, or a little bit more on a different plane there. All right. So now this is feeling a little bit too springy to me because the pinks are all kind of on top of each other. So you can use some of this pretty Adonis greenery. It's not, it, it really doesn't even look that green because it has like a nice burgundy quality. And look, it's almost like a feather. It's so like whimsical and wispy. 
And so I'm gonna actually take a few of those pieces um, and again, this is all too, a little bit too short to go, or a little bit too close to the base. Um, give it a nice clean cut. I'm gonna stick it down in between. See, so I just tucked that in there. And do you see how that breaks up all that paint? And it also adds more of a fall, autumn, seasonal quality to it. Um, and then the other thing that I'm excited to incorporate um, are some of those, is this a zebra grass, is that right? Um, you guys, I'm a little bit stale on some of my flower varieties because I've been home with a baby a lot. So it's really fun to be back in the studio. But I love the way that this looks next to some of these lighter tones. I really think that it just like helps make everything feel so seasonal. Alright, so snip that. And this, this is dried also, so it doesn't actually need to be in the water, but we'll just put it all in there too. So I'm going to do one piece in front and then one wispy piece. Kind of about like that. See? So it's now I've got the shape on either side, um, but the the colors are all kind of talking to each other. Um, like I really, <laughs> I've missed flowers so much. <laughs> um, I so we started with kind of the pinks and the burgundies, and then we have like this wax flower in here. Gosh, the color is so beautiful. It has that kind of deep moody center, but it has like a little tinge of pink and kind of the sherbet tones that connect with these roses and the viburnum berries. Do you see how it all kind of works together? Um, as far as color theory goes as well, because you want to think through that a little bit, but don't get too overwhelmed. <laughs> All right, so now I think I'm good on this side of the arrangement for the minute, so I'm going to work on the back side of the arrangement as well. And so we have some other fun focal points for you also, um, like some of these big moms are so pretty. Um, let's see, I might actually, as I'm thinking about going around the arrangement. I think I'm gonna put this next to the pink side on the back side of the arrangement. And sometimes too, once you start getting stems in there, they get it gets a little tricky to get more stems on top of these stems you already have. And the other thing too, like see this mom right here? Some of the stems right here make it challenging to get through the chicken wire. So you can take your snips and just chop off some of those, like where the leaves kind of stuck out a little bit if it's getting caught up on your chicken wire. All right, so see? I have the mum here and the dahlia up above. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's a mum. <laughs> the, the, the way that you find out, actually, if it's a mum versus a dahlia, the dahlias have a tubular stem like this, and the mums have more of this, like, stocky stem and these leaves like this. That's how you know. All right, so I have the dahlia um, little flower kind of leaning out to the side over this one here because I like the way that that connects. Um, and then, let's see. Night. I think I like this yellow. What do you guys think? The yellow with this mom. I think we'll do that and we'll kind of travel along. And that'll be so pretty because then I have, when you're looking from above the arrangement, the wax flower is kind of up at the top. All right, so the same thing. So this is kind of messy. Like, look at this. You've got a few, um, like, big rose leaves. And what I'll say about roses is their leaves can be really pretty, but a lot of times the roses that just come from the wholesaler just have, like, kind of floppy, not that cute leaves. So I usually get rid of most of my rose leaves. Um, and then that one just has a little bud that needs to be pulled off. And so I'm just gently kind of trimming up the roses like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm kind of trying to figure out where I might want to cut um, the flower off because I think that in general that's too many flowers once they get stuck into the arrangement. And they're mostly on the same plane. So I like to cut them apart so that I can trick you into thinking that they grew in a different way and make the arrangement a little bit airier. So I'm going to do like this. I like this little pair together. And oh, another thing too that's a good tip in general when you're cutting your flowers is to cut at an angle um, because that gives more surface area for your flower to soak up a lot of water. Um, and so that will of course help your arrangement also um, last longer, provided you remember to put the water in the container every day. Okay. So, let's see, I'll stick those there. And then I'll put a little shorty one underneath. You see, I kind of did the same thing here. And 
Oh, I don't know. I might have to. I'm going to cut that one a little shorter because I think I would like it not quite on the same plane as that mum right there. Um, and so another reason, too, that you want them on different planes is your flowers are coming to you where they're not quite um, open and at their most beautiful and large. So you want to give them some space to open up in your arrangement because if you put them all in there tightly, um, kind of like they come from in, like an, in a grocery store bouquet, when you get those, they're all like packed together. So they don't have enough space to really spread out. Okay, so let me tuck this little flower down a little lower. I think I cut them too short. I'm gonna use this one. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah, all right. So you see, it's a little bit more on a different plane from these and tucked down a little differently from the mum. Okay, so now I need to work on my other focal point kind of in this side. Um, and let's see. I think I'm going to use some of this Lysianthus, and I actually really love how the Lysianthus looks with some of these like deeper red tones. I think that's so pretty. And the same thing here, you've got three together, and so sometimes it's easier to cut the stem so you're able to decide where it goes rather than let the flower decide for you when you put it in. So I'm going to do... one is on the same plane, so I'm going to cut it a little bit. But do you see, I mean, it takes a few minutes to even decide how short you want it. So you can always put it in your arrangement. If it's not quite short enough, you can cut it a little bit more and then put it back and then see. Okay. And this, I like the idea of doing um, the kind of the rule of threes again here where you have them at three different heights. And that looks really nice on all sides. Um, where it kind of comes up a little bit higher on your arrangement. And again, uh, we really like more of an airy garden look here, so we're going for more of an asymmetrical look. So I'm okay with the idea that some, some of the side is a little bit taller than the other side. Um, I think that looks really nice, and you can visually balance it also by maybe letting a little bit more trail down on this side, and this side kind of goes up. Um, it just gives flowers a little bit more of a personality too. Okay. Hmm. I think it's time to use these cluster of mums. And these are challenging too because this, so they grow really straight like this, so it's hard to put them sideways. And they're all like right in a row, so you don't want to just put them like right in the middle of your arrangement. So it's totally fine to manip manipulate these stems so that they grow, you can make them look like they grow differently than they do. Um, and the other thing, guys, too, if you pull off some of these little flowers and they're too short for your arrangement, that's okay. We actually don't use every single flower and pull off some of these a lot in the studio when we're making arrangements. Um, you can give them to your daughter, you can put them in a bud vase in the bathroom, or it's okay if they go in the garbage also. So I thought that there were too many flowers like all along the lines down there. So I'm going to cut them so I have a nice little cluster up here. And then see there's another stem right there. You can just get your snips and just cut it so it's clean and you don't have a stem sticking up like that. But these actually kind of grow in a nice way where they're all a little bit on a different plane. And look at the pretty centers here. They're kind of like that pinky. They almost have a little bit of a copper tone to them. So do you guys see like where I'm heading for this? Right here in between the copper beach and this, peach, this pinky peach lysianthus. I think it'll be so pretty there. And then it connects with the yellow tones. Gosh. I need to come back here more often. <laughs> All right, and so I cut it pretty short, but I think it needs to be a little bit shorter. And it's okay too if you wanna get down on like the same plane of your arrangement. Um, or another thing that's helpful, if you're doing this at your counter, it's a little bit taller as well. Um, or you can turn a bucket, like the bucket that we sent you, if you put your flowers out and then you have the bucket and you dump out the water, you can flip it over and elevate your arrangement. Sometimes that's helpful too to kind of see where all the flowers can go. And then you're down kind of on the same like visual level as the flowers. Yeah, which I need to do some of that because, let me grab a bucket and I'll 
So you do it kind of like this, but a little dicey here, but I'll just do this for the visual. So look, I've been arranging where I'm staring down into my arrangement, but at my table, everyone's going to be sitting right here. So this is where your eye goes. And see, look, I have like a nice big hole right there, so I need to address that. Versus on the other side, see, if I'm sitting across from the flowers right here and you're sitting at the table, you look right down into that beautiful garden rose. Okay, so this is not very stable, so I'm not going to do that right here, but I now have known that I need to fill that hole right there. Okay, so... I'm going to cut, you know what, what part of my problem is with these mums is I thought that I'd have enough space to shove this down in there, but it is like pushing this bloom a little bit backwards. So I figured out that I need to lose that last bloom so that this stem can then gently lean on the edge of my container like that. And then it also um, creates that shape that I'm after and allows my guests or my table mate to um, gaze nicely into these beautiful mums. But I have these cute little short ones. Oh, and here's the thing you want to make sure you do. If you snap this off with your finger, it won't drink very well because you, you don't have a nice clean cut. So if you're going to use it after you've snapped it off, just cut it again, and then you can tuck it down into your arrangement. Aha! See? Now, there's not a hole there, and I've used this little short one to kind of cover up that whole space where it was on the container. And the other really nice thing about that, too, is so it kind of softens the edge of the container, because otherwise you don't want it just to be like a sharp edge all the way around and then just flowers stuck in it. But instead, they just kind of gracefully hang over the edge, and it sh uh, softens that straight edge, which is nice. Okay. Um, let's see. So now you can't quite see it, but I have a hole like right down in the middle. So if I'm actually walking in and I see it, look down at the arrangement on the table, I can see some chicken wire there. So I'm going to see what else I have left. I'm intentionally saving some of these like pretty ranunculus because they're um, they're my favorite. So I'm going to put them up higher so you can really appreciate them at the end. I think I'm going to use some of this straw flower. It's so pretty. Oh, and at the end of this, if you, this stuff dries really well, so you can always save this out of your arrangement um, and put it, you can keep the little zebra grass and it would make something kind of cute in a bathroom and a little bud base. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this pretty short so I can tuck it down low. Oop, and I, what I've just now done, I don't, it's not short enough for me because it kind of has like the same plain feeling here and I like it actually when it's a little airier so I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter so it goes down and I cut off this bud too so that I can actually use it and manipulate it a little bit more but I'm going to tuck that one bloom down a little bit lower and it's still not short enough see you just kind of keep it's a little bit trial and error and decide how short you want it all right so I'm going to do that one low there um the copper beach a little bit but you can kind of see too like see how the mums come out a little bit and then the straw flower is down there um, and that center that's so pretty that has that kind of golden center is really nice and connecting with all the other elements in this copper beach right here and then put a few yeah, I've got a good clean cut put a few up above like this I have to find a spot where it can grab hold so that it doesn't move too much. Uh, and this one's, it's a little bit too straight for me, so I'm gonna keep manipulating it and kind of find a spot where it can go in the chicken wire. There we go. I think I need one more. One more. Oh, actually, I have a little shorty rose that I saved from before. I'm gonna tuck that down underneath. And it's near all the roses and covers up the chicken wire like that. All right, so now I have most of the chicken wire covered. I have a little bit on the side I need to think about, um, but I'm gonna put some of these, um, the last little bit of whimsical flowers on top. So I save all of these because, I mean, look how beautiful they are. They really, like ranunculus especially, will just blow open and they're so pretty. They're like little tutus. 
And I like to leave these stems extra long and kind of float them up above everything else. You kind of have to like twist and wiggle it a little bit and their stems are so delicate. It's good to do them at the end because then you have the framework of um, flower stems down below so that their little stems can just weave right into them. Oh, look at this rust colored one. Gosh, that's pretty. So I think I might put him maybe down around there. And I, I get really particular about where I want the flowers if I'm styling it for a table. So he's not like quite in the hole that I'm going for. So you just kind of keep twisting. Like he's laying too much on that mum for me. So I think I might go for the chicken wire hole just above that where I was. Come on, little guy. There you go. Oh, he's still leaning. So you guys, this is why when we say, when everybody's like, I just want that look where it just looks like you grabbed a bunch of flowers and put them in your arms, it's a lot more work than it actually looks because it takes a lot of work to make it look like they were just gathered from the garden. But now you are learning all the secrets of how to do that. All right, see, there you go. So I was able to twist that one so you can, if you're sitting at the table, you can look right down into the center and see all of those like beautiful painterly colors. Okay. Let's see what else. All right, so I think this side needs a little bit of attention over here. You can still see like down in there. If you're sitting at the head of the table, that's not the prettiest look. Um, and there's still, I think you can still see a little bit of chicken wire in there. Um, so I am gonna use, I think I'm gonna put some straw flower right down there. And this is kind of like, if you're thinking through colors too, don't be afraid to just sort of hold up what you've got and decide. So I may end up, um, some of you might like more of a neutral arrangement, which that's why we gave you some of these Majolica spray roses. Um, I'm going for more of a colorful arrangement here. So don't be sad. If you don't use all of the flowers that we gave you, you do not have to. You can just save those and put them in a different bud base or something else in your house. Um, I think, oh look, aha, I put this in my pile of trash over here. I have some more of these little peach garden roses. I think these will be perfect. So they, this is still a little bit wild and crazy for me. So I'm gonna use them more as individual stems and get rid of all those leaves. Um, yeah, I think I like to pretend that the foliage for the roses is all this fall foliage that's in our arrangement. So I'll put one down here. So look, that's where I started. I put the one little one, I put it way down low so it kind of covers up that chicken wire. And now I'm gonna get another one and put it up a little bit higher to give it kind of that airy quality um, and also connect it and make it look more purposeful than just, oh, I use that little tiny rose to hide the chicken wire. That. I think I got one more. Here, I'll show you what I'm doing. So here, there's still, this is a little bit too much foliage for me right here. So I'm probably gonna take, do you see, this is the one I cut earlier, this is the Eliagnus, and it, nobody else is ever gonna see this, but if we're talking specific details, I think I'm gonna lose this little piece right here. Or, see look, it's having trouble coming out of there. Don't mess up your whole arrangement in the name of trying to get that one piece out. Instead, leave it alone, and if it's too long, I can just go in and cut it. I mean, you can even cut it like down at the base of the arrangement if something's driving you crazy. But see, so I cut that a little bit shorter and now I'm gonna put a rose on top of that to kind of cover up and conceal that little area and make it a little prettier. All right. Okay, I think we're getting pretty close. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of this last piece of zebra grass just because I love the texture of it. Nope, too much. So you put it over here. So you don't have to just float it up high. You can also float it out in front um, of your arrangement as well, which is really nice because that is where your guests will be sitting at the table. 
And again, it takes a little bit of manipulation with the stems because you have to find the right hold. So then when it flops over, it goes right where you want. Like, see, I put it in a hole, but it's flopping over a little bit too low for me. So I'm going to take it back. I'm going to cut it a little bit lower. And put it back in that same spot. There we go. I really love the burgundy next to this like peachy pink. I think that's so pretty. Oh, I still have some of this I got next to. So uh, you can kind of keep going as much as you want with like the flowers that we gave you in the um, foliage as well. And you know, the other thing that might actually be helpful at this point is if I took it and actually put it on my dining room table. And then if you were setting it out for a dinner, you could go ahead and set your plates out and see if you felt like it needed a little bit more in any direction. Um, that's one way to really fully style your table. Um, or you can just decide that it's time to stop. But I'm having too much fun to keep adding things. <laughs> What questions do you guys have? <laughs> um, so here, uh, here's where I added just the last little piece of again. If like if this was sitting down at the table, then that's that would be like a nice drape on the side. Um, and you could, if you liked the idea of putting some um, on both sides, you could. I personally like it when it's just on one side, um, just because otherwise it starts to look like it has wings. Um, and so I think the asymmetrical lines look really nice, but you can do the same like a similar tilt with the copper beach on one side and that I think is where I'm gonna stop